Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Jack, Conrad, 45, match week 25, the Sunday and Monday match, which just wrapped up a little bit ago. A heartbroken Brighton. Uh, lose a late one. 50, 52 touches in the opposing box for Brighton. Two in the opposing box for Palace. We'll get ne- to that. Never say football manager doesn't emanate real life. <laughs> we'll, get, uh, we'll get to that one in a minute. But first, West Ham and Spurs. So 2021, so far this year, West Ham, seven wins, one loss, one draw. Spurs, three wins, five losses, one draw, including five losses in their last six now, I think. West Ham are fourth on 45, Spurs ninth on 36. They do have a game in hand. Team discipline that Spurs did show in that kind of middle part of the season, if you were leading up to the New Year's break uh, or New Year's Day games, uh, was good, and it was n- it's now missing. They're making a lot of mistakes defensively, individual errors, just things that they can't make, and, and West Ham capitalized on it. Um, it's coming up, let's look forward a little bit here. West Ham have a critical stretch. They got City, Leeds, United, Arsenal. Are they pretenders? Are they contenders? Right, That's one question we need to look at real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the perfect time for them right now. They're playing great football under David Moyes. Um, Spurs, conversely, they got Burnley, Fulham, Palace, and Arsenal. They should be able to get some points from that. Yeah. I, I think this is a case of, um, I believe it was multi performances, some some like multi results that Mourinho said was the reason why they, he was using big words about why they're losing. Well, fundamentally, they had more XG than West Ham. And on another day, if Sohn's last minute effort doesn't hit the bar and is about a few inches to the left, it goes in. So I think this is not as bad as it is for Spurs. Are they going to finish third like I predicted? No, probably not because they've been too poor. But what I've seen this season is that I think first place has kind of been a bit of a poisoned position because we saw Liverpool were there for uh, up until the new year. Spurs have been there a bit before then. Southampton were top at one point. Where What have happened to all of them? They've all bottomed out and just gone downhill. Everton were, were at top for a little while. Will Man City have a curse? United were. United were, and they've kind of fallen off a little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm still I'm, second. But. I'm just saying maybe Pep Guardiola, maybe they're they're set to, to fall off. But I think West Ham, they will come back down to earth. Um, you That's those, a tough four. You match those next four. I think getting um, f- anywhere between four and seven points from that is a good haul, honestly, and pretty reasonable to expect, I think. I think if you – I think maybe – a win and two draws and a loss, and you're happy with that. Five points. I think that's I think that's a fine haul. Would you be upset because you are currently in fourth place, um, or you're currently in third place? I forget if they're ahead of of, of Chelsea or not. Um, but I think they did go ahead of Chelsea. Yeah, fourth right now. Yeah, but but two points ahead. Gotcha. Um, and I think they definitely would like to maintain this position. Um, especially because there's teams behind like Liverpool who are going to be chasing. Because Liverpool, I think you expect them to not be bottom in out as hard as they are. Chelsea, I think they will they come back down to earth. So this is a very interesting top four race. Um, I, I think as great a season as it's been, it's disappointing that now we're down to like a just a, a, a Champions League race. Now the title's pretty much over and relegation, with the exception of maybe Fulham versus Newcastle, it feels like West Brom and Sheffield United are going down. So yeah, if you're Spurs and you've got you're on 36 points and you win, you get all 12 points, which they absolutely need to do. That would put them on 48, and you'd only be three clear of West Ham's point total now. Yeah, and assume let's say West Ham takes zero. Okay, yeah, you're ahead of West Ham, but what position are West Ham in at that point? Right. Yeah. This is now the finger pointing stage of the now classic Jose Mourinho arc: high scoring, discipline. Finger pointing. It's the players' fault. It's not my fault. Right. I mean, fundamentally, the players are not talented enough. I, I think uh, they've got plenty of talent. They do, do have plenty of talent, but what other manager? What, they're doing right what other manager in Wolf football is getting more out of that team? Well, they, think, they seem to think Julian Nagelsmann will. And if I'm Julian Nagelsmann, I'm not touching that team because it, they've gotten rid of Pochettino, and if they get rid of Mourinho too, that's a bad group because those are two I, great managers. Yeah, I think I think uh, Pochettino is a better manager for today's footballer. I think Mourinho has not adapted. I we could go at length. We'll abbreviate this discussion. Um, I just I don't think I don't want to call current players soft, but fundamentally Mourinho, if he calls you out in the media, it's not because he doesn't like you as a person. It's because he wants you to play better. Mourinho, all he likes to do is yeah, win. I'm not, I'm not questioning him calling him out in the media. I'm just saying there's I will something concede. that he's not doing. I will concede. Like, I think Mourinho may his best course of action may be national team football. 
uh, coaching the Portuguese team because they have a lot of talent, a lot of talent, even with Ronaldo uh, towards the twilight yeah, of his career. He's better in small doses. I think him at, a na- at the national team level would be great That's because he could be. He, I, he's a great tactical mind. Isolate those matches on very few occasions. Mm-hmm. Isolate his potential to spoil things to very few occasions. Venom. And he could have a very great last. I mean, I don't know. He's not, he's not old yet. He could have another decade in, in international management. Yeah, uh, not at top tier clubs if this continues, right? I this agree. would be now three straight that he's not mm-hmm. performed very well. Villa Leicester. Uh, no Jack Grealish. Not bad, but not enough for Villa. If only he would be in pen- paying attention to the fantasy Premier League. Uh, roster changes that a lot of his teammates made, we would have known he was going to miss the match. Um, so Villa players evidently are now banned from Fantasy Premier League, but and Brendan Rodgers admitted to knowing that Grealish wasn't going to be available. And of course, that makes preparation significantly easier because Grealish routinely drags guys out of position, creates space for his teammates, for opportunity for things to happen, right? Uh, Leicester now, without Grealish to opposing them, they could be a lot more rigid and disciplined and break and do it Leicester mm-hmm. do, right? They get the two goals in the first half. Villa were better in the second. Could not find their way to an equalizer. And it looks like Grealish is out for a month. Yeah, that sucks. Um, he's one of the most exciting players to watch. And it's been the reason why we mentioned West Ham last time. Declan Rice captaining them against yep. Spurs. Uh, Jack Grealish for Villa. They're English players who are very good for these sides. And they're, they're catalysts. They're captains. They're part of the national team as well so really disappointing to see him missing out um it was a great goal from madison that, that opened oh. things up for lester yeah. uh since his debut no player has scored more goals from outside the box than him he, he does love to hit those but he's now got a, it looks like a hip problem so yeah, i'm not yeah, sure yeah, how much yeah. time he's gonna miss he went down um I, that would not be another poor loss for both england national team as and well lester. as for the league as a yeah. whole and lester um i think villa can hold their heads up really high because you were without your best player and you significantly outcreated them in terms of chances they did. absolutely and i mean that's been a problem this year that they haven't been able to bury some of their chances at times but th- i think this was not a terrible performance so i think there's something to build off of here yes you'll be upset you lost the points um but even without Grealish, you showed that you could perform against a very good Leicester side. So going forward your next couple of matches, I think there's a lot of reason for optimism for Leicester. Leicester third Villa. Uh, on 49. Next up, Arsenal. Meanwhile, uh, Villa eighth on 36. They still have two matches in hand. Uh, they've got Leeds, which should be interesting. But without Grealish, that, that's going to be a tough one. It's going to be it's gonna be tougher, yeah. Next up, Arsenal, Man City. Uh, City are going to win the league. Period. Yes. Raheem Sterling gets the winner in the second minute, and Arsenal just couldn't do much. They I, just I'm, one win in five, and City haven't lost in forever. They're 25 points ahead of Arsenal. Haven't failed to win in forever as well. Uh, Pep Guardiola saying post-match that Man City were better after the goal. What is he talking about? I mean, I know he loves Arteta, but what is he talking about? Arsenal were not in this match, and it was one goal, but it was kind of one goal match where there was never any worry, and that just speaks to the atmosphere at Manchester City and the talent that they have. It's ridiculous. They should run away with this league. Um, I imagine that for Man City, win your next couple of matches, and then <laughs> let me start resting your players for the Champions League. I, I think you just start focusing on the Champions League once this league is is, t- is sealed up because Guardiola and Man City has been a goal of theirs for a long time. Um, but 2.07 XG, they didn't even bury their chances. De Bruyne's back now. If Aguero comes back, I mean, they're getting their players back from injury, and they were already so good. He cares about having Aguero back, right? I mean, Arteta said it in the pre-match build-up. He's like, yeah, this is the way. He wanted to play with a false nine all along, but Aguero was just so good, you had to play him. Yeah, I, I, I think that the 2.07 XG, to there's the one goal scores, well, you have to play Aguero because um, – Jesus is is okay. Mares is not doing great. Does, Foden yeah. is is great. Sterling is great. Um, Gundogan as well. De Bruyne. They're not the most clinical of finishers. They're good. They're great finishers, but they have a tendency to miss chances. Especially Sterling it has a has a, a tendency a to miss some chances. A little yeah. wasteful. Um, Aguero is not. He's a very clinical striker. And so you have Aguero in there, you get an extra goal. And they didn't need it in that match, obviously. But I think it was always beneficial for them. Um, to, to to score more goals, you score more goals, you win more matches, and you have a better chance of winning matches. So, um, I don't know how to take this for Arsenal because they are what they're tenth, I believe, and there's yeah. really no calls for Arteta's losses. head. No, oh, no, I don't think so. Which I find kind of interesting because, um, I mean, they're worse than they were off under Emery, 
and they, were, they had a rough start for sure this season. They played well, and now they're in a bit more of a, a bit of a rough patch and, again. And them and Spurs are they're ninth and tenth, and they're they're great examples of in the modern game how much leeway do we offer to managers to get results with the players you have versus a need for players. Also, Liverpool with having so many injuries fundamentally, and Jamie Carragher's analysis of Liverpool kind of getting off topic a bit. They had ten players who were Champions League winners against Everton in the starting eleven, and they could not beat Everton at home. Fundamentally, you could have injuries, but also you should not be losing these one-off performances. Arsenal, it's okay to lose to Man City, but at the same time, I think they start, need to start getting some results. They're good defensively, and they're okay on the attacking end. And there's a lot of promise. I think Arteta's tactics will work great in a side with a bit more talent, but they have just far too many gaping holes in this squad that. Um, they're going to need several more years of recruitment. I think that they may miss out on European football next season. And oh, at this point? I'm yeah. not I'm not sure if, if they're ready to bite that bullet and if they need to just kind of continue scraping along in the modern game. But if they want to be a contender in the future, I don't see, same thing with Mourinho, I don't see another manager getting more out of them versus the, the long-term potential of Arteta. Shall see. I don't. I don't. I don't think. It, I think it's too soon for Arteta to be on his way out. I think that he's got. He's such a good footballing mind. I think you know bringing Odegaard in. I think is a good sign. Of, uh, granted, it's a loan. You know they want to turn that into a permanent signing. But um, I think the sh- sign of them backing him. I think he's got at least another season. See this season out into next season. See where they end mm-hmm. up. But it, it is a long term project. It's not a quick fix for sure. Yeah. That I agree with. Uh, I still don't know if Man United are any good. Um, they're good enough to beat Newcastle 3-1, but Newcastle look like a team that's ready to get relegated. Um, I don't have much else on this one. I just Yeah, this Man United team is, is very, very interesting because I think Marcus Rashford is a player who I have um, I've doubted for a long time. I've, been, I've, I've said to myself, I think he's a great player, but I think a lot, I think he, not to say that what he's done has made him look like a better player, but the great things he does outside the pitch definitely does make it, the way he's talked about on the pitch a bit stronger in my eyes. Um, but he's been backing it up. I mean, he had, he's been playing very, very well for this team. Bruno Fernandes has 15 goals and 10 assists in the Premier League. He's ridiculous. He's a ridiculous player. Um, but I, I think that he's their trick. There are still a lot of flaws to this Man United team. They played two defensive midfielders against Newcastle because they needed to protect Maguire and Lindelof. It wasn't enough on the day, and they didn't have Pog, but they didn't have Van de Beek, they didn't have Cavani, so they didn't have options, and I can accept that. But fundamentally, there are. Um, this was a match that if they, if they had dropped points, or I think it would have been arguably. W- Worse than the West Brom game, May, um, it would have been a bit. It wouldn't have been as bad as that because that was club 18, or, that was a nineteenth yeah. place team. But um, this was the one when you had to win, um, and, and I think that for for Man United going forward, they have got a lot of good individual talent. Still don't believe in Ole long term. Still don't believe in a lot of the players they have in that squad. But they're second in the league, and the results the resu- are the results. Results cannot lie. Um, especially with where, where some of their rivals are. They're, what, are they nine clear of Liverpool at this point? Yeah, they're nine clear of Liverpool, same games played. Um, Six of clear of Chelsea. They have the most goals points. most goals scored in the league. Um, Defensive record, not all that good, but you talked about the fact that they're h- really trying to hide <laughs> Maguire. And yeah, Lundlop. look, I, I think that this is just a win that you got against a team that's inferior to you. I, I, I'm interested how their next few matches look for them. They're playing Chelsea next up on Sunday. That's going to be a pretty good match. Um, because the big thing, we've been kind of harsh on Man United concerned this is a win for them, but they struggle against the big sides in the Premier League. Yeah, they sit and back and draw. The fact of the matter is they were sitting top of their Champions League group with two matches left, needing just a point, lost both of them, fell out of the Champions League. They have yet to get a win in the Premier League against a big six side this season, and they've only scored one goal, and that was a penalty by Bruno Fernandes. In the Premier League, I should, as a caveat, because they beat Liverpool three two in, in the FA Cup, um, you need to beat a, a, a bigger side if you want to prove. Yes, it's good that I you beat the sides yeah. around you, because I mean, cough cough Liverpool, you can't even. You've lost however many matches at home in a row. Um, four, four home, at home in a, row. in a row. In the, in the four in a row in the league, and, and I believe it's still four in a row at home as well. Um, but I, I would like to see a bit more big match production from them, but. 
Got to win. Score some goals. Bruno Fernandez continues to be to be world class. Um, and I think if he hasn't been as great in 2021 as he was in, in 2020, but um, should Man United get a trophy or two come December if he plays at this level? I mean, he may not be out of the ball and door discussion. Rashford? Fernandez. Oh, Fernandez. Yeah, I was like, for a second. Yeah, no, there's no question he's that good. He's that, that he's good. getting that but, kind but of results. Need to result in a trophy. He hasn't won a tro- I'm not yeah. sure if he's won any trophies in his career. Maybe. He's 26, 27. Um, and there's no doubt in his talent, but interested in what he can do in terms of pushing this team to the next level because there's still a lot of pieces away from even catching a fit Liverpool side in a, in a title race, as bad as they are. Um, I think next season is going to be the big barometer for both of those sides because it will be another year of development under, under Ole. Um, but yeah, that's about as much as we can say about that. United do sit second, 10 points behind uh, Manchester rival City. Next up, as you mentioned, away at Chelsea. And then you have uh, Newcastle next up against Wolves. They're three points clear uh, of Fulham, yeah, 25 that's, points. That's all of a sudden a very interesting race right there. I wouldn't want to be Newcastle right now. Neither would I. Next up, Brighton. Crystal Palace uh, is a classic smash and grab. Benteke, uh, the absolute last gasp winner. Brighton deserved the three, right? You mentioned it at the, at the top. The touches in the box are ridiculous. But the win moves Palace up to 13th. They leapfrog Southampton on 32. They are 10 points clear of Fulham, seven ahead of Newcastle. Brighton really needed those three for comfort, and they remain 16th on 26 points. They are a better side than Newcastle. Both these sides, I think, are. Oh, yeah. Oh, Palace is debatable with the injury problems that they've had and their inability to score and Zaha being out. But, it, you know, Benteke surprised everybody. Brighton have got to be one of the worst teams in the XG I think I've seen in my life. They have, a lot of times they. 2.06. 2.06 to 0.24, you lose 1 to 2. I mean, it's it's you create enough to at least e- equalize this match, and you did not allow very many good chances. You only allowed them two touches in your box, <laughs> and yet you lost the match. So I think it's because Mope, um, he can't really finish his chances, um, and I think Graham Potter is one of the up-and-coming managers in English football. I think he's got a lot of potential in the game. I think he's proven that with a side that not with a ton of talent, he's able to put great performances in, in week in, week out, um, and, you know, I'll, I'll mention Spurs just a second here. I think if they hadn't committed so much money to Mourinho, I'd be saying, I mean, look at what, what Graham Potter's doing with that Brighton team with such f- well, low it's talent. Like, it's it's the Mauricio Pochettino deal, right? Mm-hmm. What he did with Southampton. He got those team, that team to overperform for yeah. a while. I would say look at, at him and maybe say, like, I don't know, tr- try someone different with some, fr- some fresh blood because I'm excited to see not no disrespect to Brighton. But I'm excited to see what he can do with a side that has more talent than Brighton does. Brighton's a talented team. They're a good team. But I think the system is ready for some more talented players. So I'm I'm com- I'm comfortable in saying Brighton will be fine for safety this season. I think so, too. But I'm interested if some teams start poking around at him. If Arsenal maybe want to go somewhere Same else. Same thing for Scott Parker, Spurs right? want to go somewhere else. Scott Parker as well, even if they get relegated. Um I think that yeah, this Brighton team. I'm just still stunned about. Let's talk about Palace for a second. I'm stunned that they won this match. I mean, well, Roy Hodgson always looks so surprised when football things happen on a football pitch. He's just he, like, "Whoa, they scored!" I know. <laughs> it, it, it was like it, he was the most shocked person in the entire place. Probably, there were no fans. He but. probably was. Um, I mean, it, it's not a sustainable performance. It's as simple as that. You can't you can't take two shots compared to fifty two, and you can't have two xg to, to zero point two four. Expect to be on the losing side of those two things and win the match. So. I mean, you got the points. At the end of the day, results matter, and they got three points, which which is big because um, Fulham is moving up, and they're and they're beginning to make the teams above them look, look a little a little shaky. Um, but well, Brighton just next classic <laughs> British football. <laughs> Brighton next travel uh, to West Brom, where they will look to beat up uh, on the Baggies. Meanwhile, we've got <laughs> Palace. <laughs> Are uh, 13th on 32, and they next will try to beat up on Fulham. But I think Fulham are going to take those. That'd be uh, interesting. It's interesting to see. That's interesting. Two six pointers up for these two teams next. Well, that'll do it for uh, week. What are we? Week 25? Yeah, I think it's week 25. Yeah. Jack, Conrad, this has been the 45. Please let us know what you think in the comments. Subscribe, like, look for us on the Twitter at the 45. Take care now.